It's so awesome. Listen to it. <laughs> oh, wow. The rust. <laughs> Right, welcome back to the bunker, welcome to the channel and welcome to an incredibly special car indeed. I'm um, with Technical Director of Gunther Works, Amjad. How are you doing? I'm good, James. How are you? Thanks I for really us appreciate here. you coming down. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Really mate. appreciate it. Really, the technical details on this are almost endless and I think yeah. it would only be right to do the car justice, have yourself here to set some context. So appreciate I really that. appreciate you coming down. First of all, am I right in thinking this, this car started as a question right this, yeah. this was a what if Porsche was to start the GT3 lineage from 993 from an air cool car so Peter who's our CEO and I were sitting there and he's a big Porsche fanatic as am I and that was the question what if they'd start their GT3 program in an air cooled car yeah. as in the 993 as opposed to the 996 and then we sort of decided that yeah, yeah that's a really good question <laughs> and then this is hence fast forward to what we have now so how long has that journey been? Oh, about four or five years. Okay. Um, wow, wow, wow. And these cars, they're, they're analog cars. Uh, but 25 years, you know, they were, when they were new 25 years ago, they were state of the art. Yes. But, you know, time waits for no man. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to keep the essence of the car, but we wanted to perform yeah. like a modern day car. So that meant basically starting with a blank sheet of paper. So Peter and I sat down, we worked out what we were gonna do. Car to handle, have modern day performance, and the car had to be light. So the car is, I mean, every panel you're looking at here is carbon fiber. So every external body panel is carbon. carbon I mean, we'll, we can see the exposed detail on this particular car, but this runs through every external yep. panel. So the front bumper, the, the bonnet, the wings, the rear quarters, the roof, uh, the rear wing, the rear bumper, everything's carbon fiber. It's a gorgeous thing. It's amazing. I I'll be fully transparent here. The camera doesn't do this car justice. On photos, yeah. I was like, yeah, it's, it's okay. I'm not just saying this because you stood here. Genuinely, in reality, it's a different ball game. It's one of these really cars is. that you really need to see in the flesh. Yeah, it really, really is. I mean, sculpture of this, this thing. Talk to me about the offset, the squared setup. I mean, well, the width of it is, is unbelievable. So these cars, I mean, you'll know, because you've driven obviously lots of 964s, 993s, they all inherently understeer. Mm -hmm. And if you go and look at the modern cars, if you look at the, the current GT3 cars, both the 991.1 and point two, and the new 992, they have a completely square setup. Yeah. Now. So the front and rear wheels are in line with each other. One of the things, and not a lot of people know this, apart from people that race them, is every 964 and every 993 has additional mounting points for the front suspension arms. Mm -hmm. So if you unbolt them, there are two mounting points that are 30 millimeters apart each side. So you can widen the track by 60 mil. Right, wow. And the race cars use that to square the track up. Uh -huh. When you do that, you kill the understeer. So the starting point for us was, well, we're gonna square the square. track up. Square from So we did that. And people always want to come on questions. It's, oh, wow, you know, what's with the shape? <laughs> yeah. Well, the shape, it's form follows function. So once we got the chassis where we wanted it, uh -huh. we then built the body around it. Wow. So hence why the car is, is so wide. But if you look, I know it looks like the back's wider than the, the front. I mean, but the wheels it are is aligned. actually square, but yeah. that arch, I mean, yeah. I've seen some flares, but this is a different thing. This oh, is, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you see this? this scale of it, the swoop on that is unbelievable. So one of the things we wanted to do, we wanted to give the car as much mechanical grip uh -huh. as we could. And because obviously we've squared off the, uh, uh, the track and we've made the arches wider, that allowed us to run some very, very wide rubber. So we're running 295s in the front and we're running 335s in the two back. 295 fronts. On the front, yeah. 
That's massive. Massive. And so front end turn end is going to be a, oh. obnoxious on this thing. When you drive this, <laughs> James, I think you're going to love it. Two nine fives. I'm yeah. not sure I'm aware of anything that wears a two nine five on the front. Mm. That wears number plates. I mean, like I mean that's yeah serious. And wow. Then, and everything that we've done yeah. is performance orientated. So obviously the weight loss in terms of. Uh, all the carbon fiber and even on the interior as you see we've got our own seats our own steering wheel we'll show you the interior in a minute yeah the rear seat deletes interior. and everything else it's all there to optimize the weight but then we went further than that um, we wanted to minimize drivetrain losses uh -huh. so i'll give an example it's a rear engine car has hydraulic power steering now as you know james uh -huh. porsches are about their steering yeah right you can't mess with that. That is the whole thing. That's, the, holy grail. That's, the, that's the good stuff. That's the magic sauce, huh? Especially yeah. on the air cool cars. Yeah. So I wanted to keep that feel, but I wanted to bring it up to date. So what we did was we removed the power steering pump and the heavy bracket. This is all in the back, right? Exactly. Yeah. At the back, which then has hydraulic lines that run down the sill of the car to the front, mm -hmm. which again full of heavy hydraulic fluid. Mm -hmm. Plus the where the bracket was. The, the all the weights at the top of the engine right okay so we took that out we took the air conditioning pump out again heavy right. high, uh, air yeah. conditioning pump but between the two of them they used 35 horsepower from the crank when they're active when they're active 35 35 horsepower, 35 horsepower. so that's 35 horsepower wow. that's not going to the wheels yeah wow so what we did was we use an electric uh, air conditioning and heating system okay and we use an electric hydraulic power steering pump now, when you drive the car, you don't notice any difference in terms of the hydraulic assistance mm -hmm. on the power steering. So it's okay. exactly like the original. Okay. However, between the two of them, they only use seven horsepower. Oh, wow. So that is- And the weight distribution's better, yeah, right? And the weight distribution has changed. So there's a 28 horsepower oh, gain yeah. to the rear wheels. Wow. And then the engine itself, the engine, the only part of the engine that's original is the block. Okay. Every single part of that engine is bespoke. So it's got, billet barrels it's got um forged pistons uh forged con rods it uses a four liter crank um so it's four liters it's 435 horsepower at 7800 rpm and the red line is set at seven and eight so when you drive it make sure make you sure use, you use that the full cam <laughs> because the engine hasn't okay. rolled over at that point okay so rollover well. is when it hits peak power uh -huh. and then comes and down starts to drop yeah but we've put that as a safe limit at 7800 okay. right um and the car's quick. What's and it weigh? What's the car weigh? So this car now with these wheels, which we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, we've got to talk about these. Is these about 1160 kilos. So less than a Wet. Um, Hot like Well, with a quarter tank. tank of fuel. Okay. Um, with a quarter tank of I mean, it's, and, okay, and so all, fully uh, operational then, yes. effectively. Yeah, so you could drive Tricky. it. At with that, 435 horsepower. With 435 horsepower. Air-cooled, non-turbo, naturally aspirated electric throttle response before we go any further just and i want to set i always like saying context right in terms of what that translates to you've recently just set a uh, lap time at yeah, in november Laguna Seca. right so at the this moment this is this is berserk so <laughs> right? th this is obviously the 992 hasn't been ran there yet but at this moment in time this is the fastest naturally aspirated 911 around laguna Seca of any generation this has done a 130.99 lap time which is less than half a second slower than a mclaren p1 around laguna seca and th there's a I video out there so if I you mean, do a google search you can i, I genuinely it. haven't even driven this car yet but in a minute we're going to take you out for a drive but that actually blows my mind I yeah mean, it's, it's so peter was very uh, our ceo peter nam was very very adamant he was like look we're not just going to build something that's pretty we're going to build something that works so everything the way the car looks isn't just for aesthetics it's there to do a job so the looks were secondary the driving and the performance was primary and that's why it looks and goes the way it does let's talk about these wheels okay and also more context how difficult it's been to develop things because in a minute we'll highlight gunther works do a lot of things in-house yeah, right we do everything so they, yeah. you make your own headlights we make our own headlights i mean it might seem like a dull topic but the work and homologation and just right. development of headlights. Whenever a, like a smaller brand says to me, we make our own headlights, I'm like, you're either crazy or amazing. One of the two, Dude. you know, because it's, it's a massive job. Mm. But first of all, let's talk about these wheels. So these are a split rim, magnesium yeah. sensor, carbon and outer. Carbon fiber barrel. So we reached out to Dimac 
um, and we have now made forged magnesium and carbon fiber. It's a two-piece wheel. So we've got a carbon fiber barrel uh -huh. and we've got a forged magnesium center. And these are 11 by 18s at the front and 13 by 18s at the back. And they weigh about seven kilograms each, to give you an idea, at, the, at those wow. sizes. Wow. Um, so when we reached out to Dymag, Dymag were like, yeah, we, we can make you these wheels, but all the wheels they've made historically as carbon fiber wheels have always been flat. Okay, and you wanted a nice it dish be, to it. It wouldn't be period correct if it didn't have a dish. So we were like, yeah. well, we want you to do this. And they were like, ah, okay, well, we've never done that before. And we were like, well, now's the time. <laughs> could you do it for us? <laughs> yeah, fabulous. And they did. So we, it was a lot of work. We went through you know, a hell of a lot of uh, toing and froing and working out friction coefficients of tires and all kinds of stuff, but we've got them done. And so we unveiled these wheels recently when we launched our Speedster at Monterey in August, uh -huh. and they were on our Speedster car. And this is one of the first coupes that's got these, um, these wheels on them. Now sitting behind these wheels, like a serious set of brakes. Yeah. So is, is, this, is this car sort of set up more for, I mean, based on the lap times that you, you guys are talking about and the functionality, is this set up as a track day car? Well, you can, it's one of these cars that you can drive it to the track, make some quick adjustments to the JRZ suspension that we've got, yeah. and then take it for a blast. Yeah. And then drive it back home. Uh -huh. So these are Brembo, um, these are 335mm Brembo discs with six pot calipers. We do do a carbon fiber option. So uh -huh. we do carbon brakes now, and some of the cars come with carbon. This one hasn't, right. but some of our other cars have got carbon as an option. It's an option on all of our cars. Right. Um, but you can, it's one of these cars that's designed to drive it to the track, uh -huh. batter it around the track, yeah. and then drive it back home. Okay, so this for me is just that example of the detail doesn't stop on the outside, yep. right? I mean, you lift up every nook and cranny of this car, there's something beautiful. So it starts from the bonnet. So uh -huh. we have the, the underside of the, of the bonnet in gloss carbon, mm -hmm. and it's exposed gloss carbon. And then the frunk, as you call it, mm. this is all obviously fully carbon fiber. These are our JRZ, JRZ shock absorbers that are part of the suspension system and they're fully adjustable from here. Brilliant. This particular car, the customer likes to track it. So the rear um, shock absorbers, normally they're on the rear seat delete, oh. but in order to make changes quickly, we fit these in the engine bay. Brilliant. So yeah, the, you can just pop, pop, it up, pop the bonnet, make the adjustments, it. put it down and away you go. Um, so underneath here, we've got our electric hydraulic power steering, we've got our nose lift system, so the car's got a nose lift system, that is, is mm -hmm. you can make it a bit practical. Sure, yeah. So you come to a speed bump, you hit the button, it's a, up it, it goes comes. up, yeah. and then it can drop it and whatnot. And then um, electric air conditioning system is here. So everything's there and it's all nice and clean mm -hmm. underneath our carbon fiber. Uh, and again, all this is all done in-house, all our carbon fiber's done in-house. I like the placement of your trickle charging yes. point there as well. And we have a it's lightweight nice. battery, again. Okay. Do we wait? Lithium battery. battery. Yeah. All right. I think this is a nice transition to talk about your beautiful headlights and <laughs> no doubt the amount of work that went into this. Yeah. So that headlight is um, CNC billet aluminium, uh, carbon fiber, and bespoke glass. That and we you designed. even have your own logo within yeah, the lens. Within the lens. Yeah. So we've got the bezel, um, the whole back part of the light, and the whole frame of the light is made from billet aluminium. So it's Beautiful. machined. Wow. And then the insert is carbon fiber. And then obviously it's got a daytime running light with a halo on it. But the hardest part is making the glass. Yeah. So the glass is, you know, we specifically make the glass. And, and by the way, the, it differs ever so slightly left to right. Okay. <laughs> so you've got to make two, there's two different molds. So are they very the slightly turned in? Very fractionally. slightly, fractionally. And then the other bit is they are, all of that is built into the original lighting, uh, ha course, light yeah. housing. So yeah. you can adjust it like the factory. Right. It pops in and out like the factory, it, exactly like the original uh, light mm. that was on the, on the car from, from the factory. But again, evolution, you know, 25 mm. years of lighting technology. So these yeah. are by LEDs. Um, you know, the old halogen bulbs are long gone. So um, again, the lights of a car though, you know, for want of a better phrase, it becomes the face of the car. That's right. And yeah. these, I mean, overnight, when I saw these, it became your signature. Yeah. As soon as you can see them, it, you know. It, it sort of became our sort of trademark yeah. um, from the word go. Brilliant. Right. Let's talk about the business end. Let's spin, spin this thing around. We're going to show you engine bay and a 3D printed Inconel exhaust tips. That's Is right. that right? These things are bonkers. 
hierarchy. There's something else as well. It's difficult to convey on film. Visuals is one thing. Weight is something else. I mean, this component alone is nothing. Weighs nothing yet. Phenomenal. Now then, I've seen some Porsche engine bays, but this uh, <laughs> is another is another place entirely. It, it, first of all, visually, work of art. Um, what sort of level of engineering have you had to go through to get that sort of power out of this? So we work with our engine partner, a guy called Jeff Gamroth, who owns uh, Rothsport okay. wow. in Oregon. Yeah. And so we sat down with him and we, we worked out, well, we gave him a spec of what we wanted. And our original target was 400 horsepower. So the only original part of this engine is the block. Okay. So the original block is, is the same. I, I was going to say, that, that looks about the only original thing. Yeah. I mean, this is from space the donor car. So this car has individual throttle bodies, obviously the intake. Mm -hmm. even, we've, got our, we've even got our own custom fan, which is funny enough, was done as a sort of project by some guys who are car enthusiasts that just uh -huh. happened to work for an aero engine manufacturer, jet engine manufacturer, who yeah. in their spare time decided, you know what, let's see if we can improve this. So they scanned in the original fan uh -huh. and they remade it. So this uh, is a billet fan. So it's a billet aluminium fan. So that, that, that is machined from billet aluminium. Optimized for flow. Optimized for flow and, and, and done. Individual throttle bodies, plug and, um, coil and plug ignition. So the engine runs a MoTeC uh, uh -huh. ECU. And the MoTeC ECU has two different maps. Okay. And the reason it has two different maps is when we looked at flow optimization for the exhaust from a power perspective. So it has equal length exhaust manifolds or headers as, uh -huh. as they're known in the US. Yes. Um, one of the best exhausts for flow and power was a 997 GT3. Okay. As you know, because you've got one now, but they have two inlets. They have a smaller, yeah. more restrictive and quieter inlet, and they yeah, have a wider, slightly, yes, right, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, inlet that's okay. less restrictive, but the car's louder. So what I did was I utilized that and we've got We've got a switch on the dashboard, which is a, a sport button in effect. Uh -huh. And when you press that button, it does two different things. One, it switches from the quieter exhaust to the louder, less restrictive exhaust. Okay. And it, secondly, it switches the map within the MoTeC to a more aggressive map. Okay. So with the button off, it's about 400 horsepower. With the button on, it's the full 435 horsepower. Wow. Okay. The engine revs to 7,800 RPM, and it hasn't rolled over at that point, which means it's producing max power at that at peak. 7,800 RPM. So when you drive it later, it's all up top. Make, like, sure you, make sure you sing it. <laughs> you, you hit it. <laughs> okay, um, wow. And obviously, with that power, it's got 338 pounds foot of torque. The car only weighs, it's a sub 1200 kilogram car. And all of this from air cooled, hey? It's yeah. amazing. But yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a masterpiece of an engine. And it just pulls and pulls and pulls. And just before we show you the interior, these exhausts, which looks like the exhaust from a TIE fighter or something. So these are these are 3D printed ink canal exhausts tips. That sounds cheap. <laughs> Eight, the, um, How long does it take? Yeah, so mill time. Each one of these tips. I was trying to say print time. So that's 80 hours of print time per tip. It's so probably the same price as an M3 there then. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. Right. But, you, okay. you know, again, it's, it's, it's all to do with the bespoke nature of the car. So yeah. with the car, you can have anything you want. Uh -huh. It's all down to your imagination. All right. <clears throat> so ever since I saw you launch these seats, I wanted to sit in this car. <laughs> Here we are. Wait till you see the next version. I'll send you pictures of them. Right I can't later. wait. I can't wait. They feel great. The yeah, ergonomics they, is nice. Because there's one thing being aesthetically pleasing and there's another thing actually being functional. Yeah. And these, thankfully, are both. But do you okay. see everything that you see here, all the carbon fiber, uh -huh. all of these little billet like switches yeah. and everything's made in-house. Carbon wheel. Again, we make that in-house. Everything Fantastic. that you interact with is cold to the touch. Yeah. I love that. Uh, door cards. The door cards are all carbon. The covers for the hyper, that's all billet aluminium. Stunning. Um, Carbon seats, again, all the seats are made in house. So yeah, so even the gear stick, it's made from a billet of aluminium. It's all machined, one piece. Christ, it's solid and freezing, and I love it. Cold. <laughs> it's yeah, cold. It's cold to the touch. It's the cold touch. Wow. And then, so your this is button. the sport button. This is your sport button. And your so sport button surround is billet as well. Yes, we make that in house. And anodized. Yeah, anodized. And then obviously the, the, the cover for the switches here. is all carbon. 
Um, and we fit Porsches updated. Ah, yep. uh, yes. Stereo, so you've got Bluetooth. And, brilliant. You know, yeah. you can stream Nav. music to it and navigation. Fab. And, and everything You know, else. the clutch weight as well, and I'll save the judgment until I'm driving it, but the clutch weight's nice. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. Yeah, it's that, nice. that took a bit of work. I bet it did. You can imagine we've got, we've got an upgraded clutch in the car. So getting that right was... Um, yes was a bit time consuming, but ultimately worth it. So the from, from the outset, Elite. we didn't want to have rear seats in the car. Okay. So that then posed the problem of, well, how do we make it look nice? Mm -hmm. So how we make it look nice is do what we do, which is carbon fiber. So we made a carbon fiber rear seat delete, and I think it looks pretty spectacular. It is fab. Even down to the symmetry of the extinguisher in the, in the middle. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, it's a nice touch. It's um, something different. Very cool. Right. So we've got to drive this thing. Mate, you have got... I'm dying. <laughs> Come on, I've got James, to drive James, this James thing. honestly, you have no idea how much I'm itching for you to drive this thing. <laughs> actuation of weighting so the weight between and these things are really important the weighting of the primary components you interact with steering clutch brake and gears they're all well weighted to complement each other so when I depress clutch lip throttle and change gear like that it all feels like one cohesive component one cohesive experience There's nothing like naturally aspirated engines for that immediate throttle response. And I can already tell. Let's just press the sport button. So this goes from 400 horsepower to 435 horsepower and a remap and an exhaust change in the press of one button. You ready? <laughs> What a beautiful tone, honestly. And going back to, if you've been following the channel, we've been touching on this topic of light weighting. Oh my god, that gear actuation is amazing. Solid, cold billet gear shifter connected to a linkage that has come from the driving gods. As you swap gears, <laughs> the pickup of the throttle. I know I've just completely diverted off topic. Let's go back to the, the weight thing. This lack of weight in a 430 horsepower by modern day standards, or should I say 435 horsepower by modern day standards, doesn't sound too much, but this weighs less than a 991 GT3, which has 500 horsepower. That front end, oh wow. Listen to this. Once it starts to get hot, 
once all of the components begin to bed in, the brakes are the primary thing I'm talking about here. That, that throttle meeting up with that brake pedal, it all of a sudden makes sense as to how far it sat when it was cold. Let's just talk about steering. It's so direct. I mean, back there, we were having that chat about it being a square setup. 295 section front tires. You and I did hear that right, yeah? I mean, the way this thing turns. And there's just... Well, turns out body roll is not in this brand's vocabulary. It's just so beautifully poised. Thickness of the steering wheel, great Alcantara lines. The seats, not once have I thought about the driving position of this car, which is only a good thing. When you're thinking about the driving position, it means it's not quite right. I haven't felt the need to adjust this. Yeah, analog, beautifully analog, precise, sounds mega. You know, what's impressive from this brand is they're young. They're a, basically, they're a new brand. You know, they came on my radar around about 2018, and I think they only launched around about 2017. But the quality of the build in this car, if I just shut up for a second, no squeaks, rattles, creases, just analog engineering. It's funny that the guy's first question that resulted in this car is what if, what if Porsche were to apply GT3 ethos to an air-cooled car, what would it be like? No disrespect, Porsche, it wouldn't have been this good. Now, it's not just because Gunther Works have done an amazing job, but the technologies which they've used simply weren't available in the days of the 993. But as an aesthetic, to be able to apply that GT3 feeling into the overall silhouette of a 993, a stuff of magic. Oh dear, that's something, I, I just found something I don't like. The turning circle's non-existent. <laughs> That's why it feels like a race car for the road, because it kind of is one. And then suspension, let's just talk about the way this thing feels over a generic British B road, which reading between the lines translates to rallycross course, our roads around the area of the bunker on that great. But I actually always find value in that when I'm trying to share how the ride quality of a car feels. And despite the fact that this is a track focused, track biased, incredibly fast car, as we've seen by the uh, recent Laguna Seca lap time, it does a really good job of uh, adapting to and absorbing the lumps and bumps that we find on these roads. Thanks so much for watching, I shall see you next time. Ciao!